Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be attempting to build an emulation PC. Nope. We're going to be building a PC for emulation. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be attempting to build a mid-tier gaming system that can handle not only all of today's greatest emulators like Citra, Simu, and hopefully Yuzu emulator once it starts booting games, but can also hold its own in today's most up-to-date AAA titles. The main reason behind building this PC was when Breath of the Wild became playable on CMU emulator, my girlfriend constantly wanted to use my PC and that was really really annoying, so I decided to build this PC. Okay, let's jump across and take a look at some of the parts I'm going to be using in this PC build. Okay, so the CPU we're going to be using is an i7-3770K, we're going to be using an ASUS P8Z77V Pro motherboard. We're also going to be using 16GB of HyperX 2400MHz DDR3 RAM. For our GPU, we are using a Gigabyte a GTX 680 2GB variant. Our power supply we will be using is a Corsair 80 Plus Bronze TX 850. For our storage, we're going to be using a Samsung 256GB 840 EVO, and our case is a Cooler Master HAFX full sized ATX case. So after the purchase of my operating system Windows 10 in this circumstance, the subtotal for this build came to 385 euros, bearing in mind that all parts in this system were bought second hand. Let's jump straight into it and start putting this PC together. So after affixing my motherboard within the case, I'm simply going to put my CPU in, fasten it in its socket and then attach all necessary mounting hardware for my Enerbax ETS T40 white cluster cooler. Ordinarily I would use Gelid GC Extreme Thermal Compound as it has one of the best thermal conductivities out of all thermal pastes. Unfortunately I ran out of it in my previous build, so for this PC I'm going to be using Arctic MX2 Thermal Compound. So paste application I generally use the P method so I put a small dot of thermal paste in the centre of the CPU IHS. Then I can attach my cooler making sure to tighten both sides of its mounting hardware evenly so that the thermal paste can spread evenly across my CPU. Next I need to add my RAM into my DIMM slots as I actually ran into some clearance issues if I had my CPU cooler on before I added my RAM into my system. The mounting method that these Enermax fans use is actually quite simple. If you've used any Cooler Master or large form factor Noctua CPU coolers you'll be familiar with these clips that simply add on to the side of each of the fans and clip onto the CPU cooler itself holding it in place. Once my fan is in place I like to give it a quick wiggle just to make sure that it's not going to be moving or vibrating once it starts spooling up. Once everything is in place I simply need to plug my CPU fan into the CPU fan header on my motherboard. After I have done this I'm simply going to tidy away the cable underneath the CPU cooler itself. The next thing I want to do is actually add my GPU to my system. The best slot for the GPU on this motherboard is the very top slot. All you have to do is simply push until you hear a slight audible click signifying that your GPU is correctly attached to your motherboard. The next thing you should really do is reattach all of the case screws to your GPU. Next all we need to do is attach our PCIe power for our graphics card, attach all power connectors for our motherboard, make sure that our SSD is fully connected via SATA and has power and we are ready to power up our system and see what it can do.
Okay, now that the PC is up and running after that dramatic setup scene, let's take a look at how it runs some of my favourite games. First up, let's take a look at how it runs The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on CMU emulator in some of its most stressful scene areas. So now that we're spawned into the Hateno scene, you can see that we are getting well above 40 FPS, very good performance for any system in my opinion. The only graphics packs that I used in any of these benchmark scenes were the 900p graphics pack, so 1600 by 900 resolution and FPS++. The reason we are using such a low resolution is because I was actually getting GPU capped if I pushed up to 1080p, however, if I wished I could play at a locked 30fps using 1440p graphics packs and other graphical enhancements such as high resolution shadows. Let's transition on over to my Kakariko scene and see what performance is like there. In a similar fashion to the Hateno scene, we see very good performance in this Kakariko village scene. Also, even though it does affect my performance quite a bit, I am using GX2 drawdown in all of these scenes you are seeing. Triple Core Recompiler is also being utilised as I am using an i7 with 8 cores or threads available to me. The 3770K in my system is also overclocked to 4.1GHz, even though this is not a massive overclock, it does allow me to attain the performance that you are seeing on screen right now and quite respectable performance at that. Let's switch over to Luralin Village, my final benchmark for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on CMU emulator. Once again in this scene, you are seeing we are getting very very playable frame rates indeed. Even though it is not a locked 60fps like I am used to on my main system, containing a 7700K, 32GB of RAM and a GTX 980 Ti, this level of performance is still very very playable and I would have absolutely no issue playing the game for many many hours in this kind of circumstance. Ok, let's switch over and look at some mainstream gaming and see what kind of performance we can get out of this 385 euro machine. Loading into a full 64 player game of Battlefield 1, we are seeing well above what I would deem an acceptable frame rate of 60, even when running on a mixture of high and medium settings. These are absolutely amazing frame rates and it just goes to show the kind of value you can get out of the used PC part marketplace when you shop around and find parts that will work together just like I have. It is quite satisfying to see a PC of this price point outperforming the world's most powerful console the Xbox One X and at a fraction of its cost. So there we go guys, now that you have seen the performance of this PC, do you think it was worth the 385 euros it took for me to put it together? As always guys, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.